Welcome to the Crypto Compliance Podcast by Gagnons. Pavel Kuskowski, welcoming Crypto Compliance by Gatenox, where compliance experts and practitioners are talking about current market events and general compliance aspects. We are doing this to promote compliance in crypto and bringing exciting topics to our crypto community. Today I talked with Mark Watswabek, CEO and founder of Mweg Company, which is the financial crime outsourcing advisor and recruitment services. Mark founded the Mweg company after an earlier career in the probation services spent rehabilitating the most dangerous offender in the UK. It was fascinating conversation about technology and humans in compliance, the future of compliance, why this is the most hottest area in, the, in terms of recruitment and if ChatGPT will replace compliance experts. I want to ask you to like our podcast, comment it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. Let's together promote compliance culture in crypto and Web 3.0. This podcast is brought to you by Gatenox, a comprehensive compliance and verification service for organizations participating in the digital economy. Gatenox platform streamlines the corporate KYC process, bringing together all parts of the customer onboarding experience into a single solution. Hi, Mark. It's a pleasure to have you here on our Crypto Compliance Podcast. So, Mark, you're running successful financial crime advisory outsourcing and recruitment business for many, many years. So, and what this is the reason why we have you here. So, can you tell us a little bit more about MWEC? Absolutely. First of all, Pavel, great to be chatting to you. Thanks for inviting me. Um, glad to be here. Looking forward to it. So, so the reason we're here is historically I have a recruitment business that is focused on the emerging technology sector. Um, naturally, within the last four or five years, crypto has kind of dominated that conversation for us from a growth, growth perspective. So we've been doing loads in digital assets. I would say last year, um, in the middle of last year, there was a concerted outreach from a number of our clients, major clients within the digital assets crypto space for remedial kind of attention to be drawn to what clients have done from a KYC onboarding perspective. In an unregulated market, it's very easy to onboard people without doing the right kind of checks. So a number of kind of chief compliance officers, CFOs, CEOs that we know asked us, can we help um, look at what we have done previously and get us future state and future proofed for whatever regulation is coming and whatever a, a regulator or advisory kind of oversight firm would like to see. So that's when MWEC Solutions, the outsourcing business, was born, um, really with that immediate focus on digital assets. There are, you know, tens of thousands, genuinely, when we first looked of clients with addressable concerns or needs within historical onboarding and process. So we are building, as a result, the largest financial crime community on earth. That's our goal, which at the top is very much like an expert network stacked with, you know, people who've run regulators, um, investment banks, whatever firm on boards, the compliance layer at the most senior level is, is what's at the top. And that, 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 that kind of cascades all the way through to the heaviest populated layer of KYC, transaction monitoring, AML professionals all around the globe that we can mobilize within days and hours through the power of community to solve problems en masse. And actually what we found, Pavel, and you, you, you gave me one of the, the quotes that I use a lot within my business, and it's actually that financial crime is one of the biggest industries on earth. Um, you know, so it's not like we're even tickling a niche here. This is a massive, massive industry. So as a result of what we're doing in crypto, digital assets, we are getting outreach from companies all over the world who want help quickly within onboarding, KYC and financial crime. That could be an investment bank. It could be a fund administrator, judiciary, legal firm, commercial real estate. This is truly a massive, massive industry. So through building a community of like-minded people, we can speak to anyone on this planet about financial crime and, 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 and help them from an advisory kind of staff augmentation. And uh, honestly, 
the 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 use cases is almost endless. It's it's been a busy fun year so far, that's for sure. Yeah, and I spent twenty years in compliance, so you know I, I know what you are talking about, and that's always interesting for me. How big is this sector, you know, and also how little attention it is paid, you know. Yeah. So I think I mean there's like people are talking about this, but. In general, you know, there's interesting data coming out from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, which says it's going to be, we need to have additional 23,000 people, I mean, compliance jobs by yeah. 2026. That's yeah. massive. That's huge. Yeah. That's one side, you know, but at the same, you know, on the same side you have, on the other side, you have the technology in which I am which I see over years, it's dramatically increasing, right? So the way we redid KYC, the way the way we did KYB many, many years ago is nothing to compare to right now, right? So where do you see, I mean, where is the growth coming from? And do you see actually this growth still being like very, very active? Yeah, 100%. It's, it's probably 90% of, of my focus across my businesses at the moment. I remember six, seven years ago, you know, compliance was, you know, the ugly sister. It's like, yeah, yeah, we'll come to that first. We, we want to make, we want to make money, you know, so let's, let's onboard people. Let's do business and we'll sort that out afterwards. We have seen a massive flip reversal of that. Um, you know, not just in the crypto space with the FTX scandals and, you know, three hours capital and so on and so forth of, of which that, that house of cards hasn't finished tumbling yet. Um, you have you have seen. I mean, let's just st stick with digital assets. If you go to any major, you know, event or conference, I would say, you know, five six years ago, very very few technology firms within KYC or transaction monitoring or compliance. I'd say half of the stalls there now are, are firms within that space. You know, if you look at transaction monitoring, I could give you a list of ten companies that all just stand next to each other at every single conference you know so it's 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 a it's, it's a huge industry and i think as the regulators get a little bit more savvy um as to financial crime and and technology makes it a lot easier for those who want to commit financial crime you know there's there's not just a, a um an increased focus within digital assets i think it's across it's pan industry and and the need for compliance is is just doing this we have five or six clients now where, you know, these are big, major clients, big global conglomerates, as well as, you know, high growth fintechs and others. And compliance is the top of almost every single CEO's agenda. You know, are we safe? Are we secure? Are we doing things in the right way? And if not, let's fix it now because we have to. Yeah, but at the same time, when you you know, and we spoke about this before, right? It's uh, what I what I saw in my career is typically when the crisis comes, um, that's typically when the compliance people are fired, you know, and that's something which we saw <laughs> this time around, especially yeah. in crypto, right? Yeah. And the same time, so you, when you you know the crisis crisis is gone, you have marketing, sales, tech employed, you know, so these are typically hot seats, you know, they remain hot seats, you know, in the crisis, but then you have the compliance people, you know, hired last, so, you know, you have the last to hire, first to fire, right? Yeah, and, and that has typically been what it is. Honestly, and, and I can only talk from my business, right? I can't talk from the perspective of, of competitors or the people in the space. Commercial and technology people are losing their jobs at the moment. It's 300,000 redundancies in tech at the moment. Compliance, unless there is a, a, a person or an individual or team within compliance that aren't performing particularly well, that is where there is a hiring focus at the moment. And I mean that across the board. So this is even within the last, I'd say, three to six months, there has been a seismic shift in, in, in the hiring need for compliance rather than the firing need for compliance when a crisis comes. So it's, it's definitely a, um, a shift that's happened relatively recently, I'd say. Yeah. And when, I mean, do you think it's because the regulations are more strict or the businesses are realizing, okay, we need, we need compliance and, you know, we need someone, you know, who is, and what's the, if you then if you someone is recognizing that it's it's actually relevant right what type of people they are looking for i mean because you can you know typically you can go for like someone who speaks compliance 
right? And they use some buzzwords, I don't know, KYC, you know, transaction monitoring or something like this. And, or someone who actually understand the job, delivers on the job, is helping the business to grow, mm-hmm. right? You know, so what's your, like, when you talk to companies who are looking for people, what, what's their focus? Yeah, it's a good question. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a bit of everything. Um, you know, and, and, and just to go back to your point on why, I think the why is we are now abundantly aware that we have not been doing business in the right way because we have seen lots of other companies fall by the wayside for compliance related issues. This isn't just digital assets. This is financial services. You know, we need to make sure our, our house is in order. And also, I think it's an awareness that we haven't been doing it very well. You know, we actually, you know, have put this down the agenda. This has been, become further down the, the, the priority list for the C-suite. But now with, well, you just have to look at the news, you know, compliance is, it, it, it's, is on top of everything. It, it, it is a, a shifting priority for, for most firms across most industries. And what do people want? Well, this is where you get the, the kind of battle or the, the, the kind of fight for talent. Because, you know, you look a few years ago in Silicon Valley, it was who can get the best developers straight out of, you know, the, the kind of red brick and or, you know, the, 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 the big major MITs and so on in, in the States. It's, I wouldn't say we're there with compliance, but, you know, for our recruitment business, you know, somebody, let's just talk FCA registered. If, if they are FCA, you know, it's SMS 16 and 17, and they've done a little bit of risk as well. They came at such a premium, it's not even funny because a, a client will snap their hand off if they can be both commercial advisory and hands on. So, you know, those, those chief compliance officers who, who have that advisory and commercial capacity and have a good relationship with the regulator and understand how, how they work and operate for good, bad or, or, or ugly, you know, they are hugely in demand. And then you look at, KYC, this is a huge surge as well. We have part of our business is just surge support. You know, if a, if a big exchange in crypto goes down, there's a huge need for, for lots of other exchanges to onboard clients quickly. C- companies in digital assets don't have huge onboarding teams. You know, they don't have huge compliance teams. And actually, that's not to their credit at the moment because onboarding in crypto is pretty poor across the board, you know. Lots of companies have these institutional onboarding processes that just drop out because they're either over manual or they don't have enough people to, to, to do the outreach and clients just fall through the net and go somewhere else. So there's a huge need for the, 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 a skilled KYC analyst in this market as well. And that's, you know, another reason why we've built this community that we can. Yeah, we can hold, on, hold, hold on, you know, reading what you, what you just said, right? You know, listening to what you just said. Yeah, kind of what you describe is what I see. What I say it's a it's a human interface of compliance, which is the most critical, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, they can someone who can explain why regulations needs to be followed to the business, yeah. to C level, to yeah. the regulators. So it's almost someone who is like, you know, translating from regulation to human. Right. And that's, the, and that's always going to be like this, you know, it's going to be always this aspect of, uh, you know, human I- interaction, yep. but at the same time, what I see, and that's something which, you know, which we have in Gatenex, you know, the, the amount of work being done by, you know, technology history, I mean, replacing historical processes is around 75% which is perfect, yeah. right? And I think, you know, this yeah. is perfect because, you know, when I, when I was in RBS, you know, and we had people on the ground in uh, India, which I think yeah. you know, outsourcing to India is almost, I mean, I'm not it's saying this in this way, but, you know, like it's almost like replacing this with automation, mm-hmm. right? Um, because this is like, you know, the process is, you know, shifted outside and there's someone who is responsible, but nobody in the headquarters knows the name of these people. That's typically what's happening, right? You know, errors, interesting errors coming up, but in principle, you know, for me, it was like, all right, these guys are effectively, you know, plug into 
technology, right? You know, <laughs> that's something which is, and there's always like, oh my God, you know, we, it can be replaced and it should be replaced. Well, look, KYC, no matter where you look, KYC is KYC or KYB, right? It is a thing, you know, ostensibly it has a linear process and it has things that you need to check and things that you need to gather in order to make a, a compliant rationale decision on, on, on who is who and, and are they safe, right? And you can do that in a linear process. However, then you have the issue. Every, uh, Despite it being KYC, every client I know, every single one has a different process because they have interpreted what they need to achieve from it slightly differently to somebody else or somebody in the regulatory space or the policy space down there has said, well, actually, we think the regulator means this. You know, no one has a particularly strong relationship with the regulator because the regulator is, is, I'm not bad mouthing the regulator, the regulator is a regulator and businesses tend to be commercial in nature. Um, whereas the FCA or the, you know, BAFID, they're not, they're, they're regulators. Um, so everyone does things slightly differently and everyone has a slightly different interpretation. So you, I, I, well, you know that I know this and this is why we talk a lot. You, you can and should be able to automate way more right um there is still however always that manual point where something will fall out and a human has to interject they have to at the moment you know i can't see that far down the future where that will change and i'm sure we'll come on to the ai topic at some point um but yeah kyc is done differently everywhere and then you talked about the, the, the regulatory side. How do people translate what the regulations actually mean, particularly when they're nebulous or not even, or, 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 or not here yet, you know, in many cases. So then you have, you know, some companies that are more scrupulous than others. So it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a messy area where there's a lot of cleaning up that needs to be done, but it's definitely rising up everybody's agenda. All right. You mentioned that you had, you know, you have a lot of conversation with, with businesses and that's your, you know, daily routine. What's the key driver for them in terms of recruiting? You know, we spoke about it, but let's, let's drill this down. Is it fines or it's someone who is, who wants to, well, I mean, it's very difficult to, for me to accept the, the saying that, oh, you know, someone wants to do good things, you know, and someone wants to, I mean, it's not happening this way. It's either fines or the risk of, you know, losing business or license or, you know, all those together, two. You know? Yeah. It's, it's so it's, 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 it's right. Hold on. So if we look at it from an onboarding perspective, if we're losing 50% of potential clients from an onboarding process, because we can't KYC them on time, how much money are we as a business leaving on the table? And actually, if you sort that solution out, you can become a more profitable business. Then the other one is, you know, retrospectively, we probably have been a little bit naughty or we haven't paid as much attention to compliant processes as we should. And therefore, with what the regulators are saying um, and what regulation is coming or, or, or what we need to do, we need to make sure that if we're looked at, we are compliant and we probably haven't done so. And this isn't just digital assets. This is businesses all over the place. So I think yeah, a lot of it is fear that we haven't been operating properly and we've been, you know, overly commercial in nature and, 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 and seen compliance and onboarding and and, and, and and what comes with that seen as something we can retrospectively solve. I think now to onboard better and to avoid the risk of fine, regulatory shutdown, you know, there's lots of companies where the, a, a regulator will close down a license through through malpractice. Um, you know, we're dealing with plenty of companies, you know, who, who, who have unfortunately fallen by the wayside as, as, as a result of that. So I think fear and, and, and definitely wanting to be compliant because the regulator is going to be taking a closer look is the number one driver and nobody wants to be in trouble, you know. Um, second, secondly, I think, you know, people can see that a better KYC and onboarding process in particular can have huge commercial benefits for a business. So there is there is an increasing kind of sexiness to compliance, if you like, that do it well and you make more money, rather than compliance historically is seen as, you know, the you know, the the, the grumpy father in law who just stops you doing anything. 
hundred <laughs> percent, you know, that was like yeah. <laughs> always the case, always the case. Listen, yeah. um, slightly off topic, uh, you deal a lot with people, right? Yeah. On a daily basis. And yeah. in your earlier career, you did the probation services, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, I know that we didn't talk about this before, right? I mean, we talked about our on the first meeting, and I know that uh, we didn't talk before this recording. So tell me, yeah. I mean, is it helpful what you learn in this, or like what you what you're dealing with people? You know, what you learn from this? Yeah, I th I think it is, particularly from the recruitment side, actually. Because, you know, I, I was dealing with serial killers and paedophiles and murderers and terrorists and so on. I was, you know, um, I, I, I had the, the privilege of, of working some of the, with the most serious offenders in the country. And actually, they all have different personalities and profiles and ways of making decisions that enable them to do something. So actually, from a recruitment perspective, being able to speak to people and just sniffing out what the truth is and what the truth isn't. I think I is, is, is a skill that I do have, fortunately, from, from, from my previous career. Um, and it's very easy to sniff out somebody in compliance who's not doing a particularly good job because it's, you, 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 you can just tell quite quickly by asking the right question. So I, I think it, it has helped. I haven't caught any criminals through it yet, but, um, but yeah, it's def definitely helped me to, to ask the right questions, not just of people, but companies and, and how they, how they act and how they perform. Yeah. Um, it's funny what you yeah. said, you know, on this sniffing, because I have exactly the same uh, approach. Right. And I know how the good compliance person or, you know, really, really yeah. good compliance, you know, AML expert would look like, talk like, you know, and whereas, yeah. whereas, you know, somebody is actually, um, you know, trying some bullshit. Right. Uh, yeah, and that's I don't have this for sales right now. I mean, I grow over time, right? In 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 sales area, right? You you, you hear you know the words they're using, you know the, you know what how they behave, you know all this stuff, acting, reacting, you know that's something which which is really interesting. But at the same time, IT sector, I cannot you know understand who is good performer or bad performer. You know? So that's <laughs> something which is like you know knowing it's, people is really. It's, it's it's very different, you know. Certain skill sets are are very different. You to to test a good developer, typically you have to do a test, right, to see how good somebody is when it comes to their programming language of choice. A salesperson is a completely it's the opposite end of the spectrum. So to ascertain what good is, you have to ask different questions and actually potentially be a lot more probing and and and, and think a little more laterally. Um, that's not the case for all, all roles, of course, but I think it's a, it's, it's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. And I think, you know, interesting and, and, you know, knowing what you're doing, you know, one of the things, uh, which I know you're developing, I don't know where you are at the moment with this, you know, in particular, and if you want to talk, it's, is the risk book, right. And that's something which is hugely, hugely interesting, right? And I frankly, you know, and we, we spoke about this before, and I think if, if this is going to be successful and it's probably will be successful, it's going to be a huge, huge uh, deal. And that's dealing with, and, you know, I let you explain, you know, the risk board part, but I think, you know, this is where motivation, training and recruitment comes together. And these are the yeah. really very, very important parts of the compliance journey in, the, in general, you know, because I, I know so many people who are burned out in compliance and simply, yeah. you know, losing 100%. of growing, which is pretty normal in, in like every industry, but you know, like it's, it's a tedious, sometimes really not recognized work uh, of compliance people. Right. So tell me more about the risk, risk pod. Thanks. Yeah. So, so the risk pod is the beating heart of our outsourcing business. It is, as I mentioned in, in brief at the start, we are aiming to build the largest community on earth. We have a formal launch for it next month of people within the financial crime and regulation space. Actually, you, we, we found already that our legal division of the risk pod is growing, as are others. But ostensibly, it's that compliance um, community that we're looking to extrapolate globally. So we have people in all four corners of the world on it. The reason it's so important is, I don't know, 
let's say you are a, a company with thousands of client files that you need to remediate and or work on or build a, a better process. You can go to a KPMG or a, a, in fact, I'm, I won't name other companies' names, an advisory firm, and it will take a long time to staff a project of, you know, 10, 20, 25, 50 plus people. The, the, the community for us is great because it's, you know, it's a bit of a badge of honor. Or we, we certainly want it to be because people refer good people into it and they are vetted and are tested and are, are, are allowed entry into that community where you can get mentorship, menteeship, you know, training, access to opportunity and lots of other things. Trust me, there's a lot coming with the community that, 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 that we will build. But ostensibly the, the, the power in it is there's 14,000 people in it at the moment that we can talk to. You know, not every single one of those has been vetted yet, but many, many have. So if we get, you know, a client that needs X amount of people, whether they're onshore, whether they're in-house, whether they're remote, within a really quick period of time, we can ask our community um, a question and we can build a pod or pods of people at all levels that manage it themselves on client site to do work really well. They are trained, vetted, experienced, and they can come in and solve problems really, really, really quickly. Naturally, we have that advisory level. We've got John Carr, who's our chief risk officer, who is as good as it gets, you know, as well as, well as other advisory board members. But the community itself just answers any question. So it's a really powerful thing. You've seen it in action a little bit, Pavel, you know. Um, and you were at our first event as a, as a partner of ours. Um, that, I don't know. There's just something about it, isn't there? It's 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 a growing community of people who get access in 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 an area that is growing. So it's yeah, it's a really exciting time to be part of it. I think, like frankly, this is this was missing for I mean long time this type of approach and you know i've, I've been running association um of compliance officers in poland yeah. right yeah for many many years and it's kind of you know what you're saying it's association but commercial right it's kind of my feeling right that you can you know you have people who are supporting each other you know exchange yeah. knowledge you have knowledge yeah. you know brought to them you know motivation yeah. and it's I mean, it's funny because when you think about this, you know, it's, the concept is pretty straightforward, right? No, why nobody else is, is doing this on the on the market? That is very, very interesting, right? And I think you know, it's, it's definitely needed. And on this point, you know, so like when you talk to, you know, when I was in RBS, you know, or you know, uh, UBS, we spend a lot of money on third party outsourcing or stuff augmentation, all this stuff. Yeah. We just kind of saying, you know, oh, my, oh my God, you know, this is KP, KPMG. You mentioned KPMG. KPMG, KPMG was, I mean, it was the worst, you know, frankly speaking. <laughs> no comment. Uh, yeah, no comment on this. And, you know, like, so, but there is still huge need on the outsourcing, right? And stuff augmentation. Huge. What's the it's what's huge. the main main driver here? I mean, is it like we cannot recognize where the peak is coming, or you know, we need some people immediately? Or it's 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 across honestly, it's across the board. And if you think what the risk pod can do, right? So you pay a big four an advisory firm X amount of money. Our community is ostensibly the biggest bench on earth. That's what we're trying to create. We but they're not. It's not a paid bench. These people are still working and or in contract positions and or looking for work. They are part of a, a community where they will be reached out to and get access at any one point. We know that every single year, tens of thousands of companies, it's actually more than that, that we can address on board or have to review their client files in various jurisdictions and various locations. You know, if you're doing it in the Cayman Islands, there's a very different way of verifying documents as there is when you do it in Singapore and so on and so forth. The risk pod, we can just put people with that regional abilities and skill sets on site within a day, within a day or remotely within even less time. So, so the need is, is across, you know, it could be transaction monitoring, for example, but it's predominantly KYC on and offboarding, right? Because that's where the need is and reviewing and remediating, you know, files. Things change a lot. You know, that your, your clients as a business aren't going to reach out to you and, 
you know, tell you when there's a bit of change of UBOs or, you, you know, somebody's moved house or this company has moved, you know, address formally. These are things that have to be updated to ensure this is a, a, a smidgen of the things that are needed, of course. Everyone needs this, 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 this high, high intensity, but not permanent resource to ensure that the clients that they're working with, they can work with in a compliant legal manner. And therefore everyone needs it and everyone ends up paying far more money for it than they should. The risk pod is, is, is really looking to. Yeah, but what's the, what's, the, what's the driver for the company to get, you know, like when you talk, like what's the typical, let's say, oh, we are, we have this problem and, you know, that's why we need people. What's that this problem typical is? So there's, there's, there's a few. Remediation is one, that's for sure, right? You know, that's, so. Yeah, it's, it's the big, that is that hands down the big one. Which is, which is crazy, you know, when you think of like, but, you know, like I, KP, I mean, when I was again, you know, in RBS, you know, KPG was saying to me, we live from remediation, right? We live from remediation and the amount of money spent on them are goes like, you know, it, uh, it's insane. It, and it is insane. Um, that, that is the, the key one. And the reason that is the key one is because that's a true volume piece of work. Right. Right. That, that, an organization doesn't need to have 25 permanent people to review client files or refresh them. What they need is a hard, short, sharp resource that can be augmented quickly, do the job and move on and build a better process and leave it in a better place. The other things that clients need are, you know, are we, are we working in the best way moving forwards to onboard, for example. So that's where things like gate knocks really comes in. Actually, is our process too manual? You know, so, so, so the biggest need is retrospective looking. Then the second biggest need is what are we doing actually now to make our process better so that when we look forwards, we're spending less time and money on this. Right. And um, then you need like top experts to do this, right? That's where the advisory part of the business comes in. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. But, you know, I, I think, you know, like coming back to, to our, you know, main topic, technology uh, versus human, right? Um, yeah. I see a lot, you know, when we drill down from our perspective, from Gatenox perspective into what we can do with open AI or similar, so, you know, AI solution, that's like huge huge impact, right? Reading documents, summarizing them, translating to different languages, um, analyzing information which you have on the internet website for the company, that's KYC, KYB perspective, right? Writing SARS, which is going to be very, very interesting, you know, going forward. Uh, there's like so many topics, you know, and I mean, we, we catch up before, right? You know, so what's, what's your conversation with the client? The, you know, it's incredible to hear it's so opposite view, right? From the clients. So tell me what you hear from, from on, on this. So we are, we are at a very nascent point of AI, right? AI has been around for a long time, but when, when we're talking about this particular topic, there's an appetite for it, but almost an absolute, we cannot trust AI to do a job at the moment that is so intrinsically important to our business. And therefore, we don't trust AI, <laughs> essentially, to make decisions, particularly when it comes to compliance and risk. I think you, you make a good point there, actually. Can you use AI to do information gathering more quickly? That That, I think, is is a no brainer for anybody, but there, there, there isn't a client I've spoken to when we say, oh, there's an AI tool that does, does this and can help you make this decision. There's just an intrinsic fear that clicks in. It's like, whoa, 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 hold on. Are we giving our kind of compliant decision-making ability over to ostensibly a robot? We're not comfortable with that. So I think there's still that kind of dichotomy between, you know, what a robot can be trusted with and not whether or not i mean we, we look ai is it makes a lot of things in compliance and kyc so much easier 
so much easier, particularly from an information gathering kind of assessment and, and kind of reach out perspective. It makes complete sense. I think there's just a fear of what could go wrong. I think, I mean, like the idea for me, and I'm speaking about this for, I think, last 10 years is that compliance will need to be very comfortable with technology, right? And unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't see this happening as quickly as we would expect. Quite opposite. I think, you know, one of the things which we see is, you know, I rather work on my Excel spreadsheet for the next two, three years, even though it's, I know that it's, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of errors, you know, all this stuff and don't apply technology. Typically, when we see the change, the change is coming from sea level outside compliance. Right. And that's something which is striking. What's your what's your view on this? Uh, where where do you think? Do you think that the, the compliance group is overly conservative? I mean, I, by nature, they should be right. <laughs> but, you know, I, and I, I was in this in, in their shoes for like 15 years almost. Right. When I was in, in banking and AML compliance for many, many years. And I was like. Right, you cannot be entrepreneurial or risk taking in compliance, right? So it's kind of you know, that's interesting technology versus you know compliance play, right? Yeah, it, it's it's there's a long way to go, that's for sure. You know, if you if you're a trader and you can, you know, use a piece of technology to speed up your kind of decisioning, absolutely. If you're in compliance, that kind of flies in the face of what compliance is in terms of thoroughness. So whether that's true or not, um, there is a, a, a fear that, you know, we have to look at this issue with a magnifying glass and it needs to be a human that does it so that we know we can we can practically say we have looked at this. So I think there's just a long way to go. So I think technology still needs to be able to convince a lot of people in compliance that they're the right way to go. I think where, where most compliance people that I speak to – Definitely, definitely see the value in tech is speeding up the automation of of reach out, of onboarding, of APIs into companies else to get the information to th that kind of stuff. There's a there's a definite appetite for that. Transaction monitoring and SARS, that's quite an obvious one on on that side because that you know is technology that that, that can do that. I think you know on the decision making process. There's a massive aversion to using any technology, and that has to be the person. There is definitely an appetite for how can we speed up the gathering of information and, and how we process the KYC part of the, the, the journey within the client lifecycle management process. Okay. Um, in terms of skills, which you see are like, if you would be advising right? Your compliance friends, where to focus in terms of development to stay relevant and to grow for the next five years, right? Where would you say is the biggest grow and what's actually right now missing the most? Good question. So regulation one, there are... Understanding regulations or... Yeah, 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 and being able to interpret it and and build process into your business quickly. Because so if you advisory side, right? Kind of advisory. Hundred percent. The amount of my clients that are consistently asking for legal advice through the risk pod is just doing this, this, and this, and this, and this. Um, so if you have a an advisory kind of skill set to your compliance business. That's a huge boon. That's 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 okay. A, 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 a skill set that is really well paid for um, and really important, particularly if you look at digital assets. Yeah, you know, reg regulation is going to come in swathes, and it's going to be different from country to country, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, from region to region, from company to company. You know, so being able to interpret that. And, and action it quickly. If you've got a good policy writer, you know, who can interpret that regulation and put a policy that is actionable by the business more quickly, that's hugely valuable because it saves time, it saves money, and it allows you to transact quicker. 
So that's a, that, that kind of consultative advisory skill set within compliance and the regulation side of compliance, from my opinion, is, is, is a really high growth, high impact kind of area that's coming as, as, as regulations in bed. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting, but funny, you know, uh, I spoke with one company recently, Comply AI Pro or something like this, yep. where they, they do exactly this understanding okay. regulations, yeah. translating this into compliance. And then yeah. it's almost like, you know, it's tricky with this, right? Um, because... Well, it's, tri- it's tricky because it's, it's open to interpretation. Yes, but at the same time, we don't know what's the AI that, that, that you know, this type of models will tackle first. I think that the critical element, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the, the human interaction. That's not something that's going to be replaced by, you know, technology, right? This is, you know, me calling, I know the guy in, in regulator, in FCA, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like give them a call. Like I know how to speak to business to, for them to get comfortable on what's happening. I know how to listen to them. You know, there's a soft you, skills yeah, you, are you, increasing. You you, important, right? Yeah, you don't want a computer or a machine emailing your biggest client and saying, we're going to turn the taps off because you haven't sent us a passport. <laughs> right. True. hundred hundred percent. Yeah. All right. You know, so what, where, and where is the market you, you think is going to be growing the, I mean, in terms of jurisdiction, the U S UK. Everywhere, everywhere, e- everywhere. That sounds good. And, 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 and I mean everywhere. You know, we speak to, you know, there's clients, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, it's such a, a big area. We had a client call us the other day and said, okay, we want to um, open up a, 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 an operation in Singapore. In, we're Singapore. They're a Singaporean entity. We want to open up, um, you know, an EMI business in Lithuania and then we want to passport the uh, license into the UK. We were like, well, you can't do that. Um, you know, Brexit has happened and, uh, and therefore that's, so they just, they, I think these are incredibly smart company and incredibly smart people, but you know, there's just this lack of knowledge and awareness of, of, of compliance and regulation and what you can and can't do. Um, and that's that the, 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 with the regulatory focus and actual regulation coming, it's a, it's a explosion of, of need coming. And if you're not on top of it and ahead of it, like you say, the higher last, um, you know, principle will really come and, 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 and hurt you, I think. I mean, one of the, one of the indicator, which I also apply, which I had in, in traditional finance, but which I applied also to crypto is, you know, if firing is have or let's put it in this way. If you have too big rotation in compliance team, especially in chief compliance area, yeah. there's something going on with the company. You know, I think the only company which didn't follow this, uh, this, this path is Revolut. You know, they, they, they had so many compliance and AML officers, you know, changing and the business is still growing and it's still relevant. And I am, you know, personal and it's a company, you know, still client of them and, you know, keeping my money over there, which, you know, think when you think about the risk, it's actually increasing. So that's something which, which I always, you know, saw like if there's too many, too much movement in compliance and AML, there's something going on. Something. Yeah, th- 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 there is, there is, and I agree with that. But it could also be for for good. It could also be that there's there, there, there's an awareness that we need to we need to do better. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, Mark. Thanks a lot for your time. No, my, it's been my excellent. pleasure, buddy. All right. Yeah, we'll be speaking soon, no doubt. Cheers. Crypto compliance brought to you by Gate Knox.